Okay, so thank you, Nebosha. Uh, could you allow me to share my screen? Okay. Yes. Sharing the screen. Um, okay, so um, I'll uh, first, um, as Nebosha said, I'll give you uh, an overview of Acronis uh, uh, Cyber Cloud uh, platform. Um, and uh, we'll have today two sessions uh, for about uh, 40, 45 minutes each. Um, and in the first session, <clears throat> we'll, we'll make uh, an overview of the platform uh, to see uh, <clears throat> all of the capabilities. And then in the second session, we'll be focusing on uh, three uh, major advanced packs, uh, which are the advanced email security, the advanced DLP, and uh, the advanced disaster recovery. Um, the sessions will be very practical. So I'm, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'm going to use uh, the console directly. I'm going to show you the <clears throat> capabilities di directly in the console. So um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Just put them in the chat or in the uh, Q&A. Uh, I see that uh, in the chat. Yeah, okay, in the chat is uh, uh, <clears throat> more convenient. So put them in the chat and I'll make sure uh, at the end of each session to get them answered. Um, as I said, uh, quite a practical session. Don't hesitate if you have any, any questions, uh, if something pops up in your mind or if you want to <clears throat> focus um, uh, on some functionalities deeper, just drop uh, uh, your questions in the chat and uh, we'll cover them. Now uh, let's start with uh, uh, the Acron Cyber Protect Cloud uh, platform. Um, <clears throat> it is uh, it is a multi-tier, multi-tenant platform. It is especially designed for uh, managed service providers to allow them to um, <clears throat> create uh, their uh, customer tenants and to manage them. Uh, there are two major components. Uh, well, what you see now is the service provider tenant management uh, <clears throat> console. And um, here you can <clears throat> create your uh, customer tenants. And then uh, the second major component is the uh, customer tenant management uh, uh, console where uh, you can manage the devices and plans uh, of your customers. Uh, when you create uh, a new customer, uh, you can put <clears throat> the uh, respective customer tenant either in uh, trial or in production. If it is in trial, it, it will automatically go after 30 days uh, in, in uh, production. During the trial period, uh, uh, it is absolutely free. All the functionalities are available, can be tested. And uh, it is absolutely free. Uh, neither the customer nor the managed service provider is being charged. So <clears throat> during the trial period, uh, everything can be tested uh, free of charge. There are two management modes, um, self-service and managed by service provider. If, it is, uh, if the tenant will be set in self-service mode, then only the administrators of that specific tenant, uh, this is the first administrator which we create uh, when we uh, create the tenant, and then uh, this administrator can create uh, on their own uh, another administrator, so users, and only those administrators here, uh, which are created in the tenant, they have the capabilities to manage the devices and plans. Um, <clears throat> which means that uh, the service provider with their service provider uh, accounts, they don't have access to manage them, uh, this customer tenant. When it is uh, in managed by service provider mode, then uh, the administrators of the service provider can jump in the customer tenants and manage uh, the devices and plans by their own uh, service provider <coughs> cred administrative credentials. There are two security options. You can activate the two-factor authentication and uh, the enhanced security mode. Enhanced security mode is convenient for customers who have uh, who have um, uh, a requirement uh, to uh, allow the service provider to manage their device and plans, but they don't, don't want to allow the service provider to look into their data. So only uh, encrypted backups will be allowed and the customer will be forced to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, enter their own password. Uh, when it is in enhanced security mode, there are certain limitations. So when you, <clears throat> when you decide to, to switch it on, 
please pay attention to uh, to the limitations in the documentation they are described for example um <clears throat> it, it is um, uh, not allowing uh, the functionalities in the cloud to cloud agent so you have to use only the uh, local agent if you if you want to protect microsoft 365 uh, uh, <clears throat> application um, and uh, yeah, make yourself familiar with the limitations uh, which are imposed by this uh, enhanced security mode if you want to uh, to use it. Two-factor authentication, it is um, a must nowadays. Um, in, in the cloud, uh, uh, it, it, it becomes a de facto standard. <clears throat> so you can activate it from here. In our case, we work with uh, Google Authenticator or, or with Microsoft Authenticator with uh, one-time password uh, additional code. Here we create the, the administrator. As I said, uh, if it is in managed by service provider, then it makes sense this to be administrator um, of the service provider, administ administrative account of the service provider. If it is in self-service mode, this will be an account uh, from the customer. And uh, <clears throat> then we go to, to select uh, uh, services. We have uh, so-called included features, basic functionalities, which are included in the uh, monthly commitment and uh, are not subject of additional charging. And on top of the included features, we have so-called advanced packs. Uh, you see all of the advanced packs available. As said, uh, during the first session, we'll cover all the functionalities. We'll go briefly through all of the functionalities which are covered by those advanced packs. And then in the second session, we'll focus more on the, uh, on the advanced email security, advanced data loss prevention, and advanced disaster recovery. Uh, here you can see the, the content of each advanced pack here in the tooltips. And later in the customer tenant, you'll see that uh, <clears throat> it is also um, each of the functionalities, which is part of certain advanced packs, a certain advanced pack uh, is marked so that there is a that there is a small icon and um, uh, you will be notified uh, which functionality uh, requires additional uh, setup of uh, advanced pack and is subject of additional charging. Uh, the, uh, the, there are two billing modes per workload and per gigabyte, and the functionalities uh, in both billing modes are uh, absolutely the same, just the billing model is different. From here, you can activate also file sync and share, physical data shipping, notary. <laughs> These are separate services, which you can activate them uh, from here. And then uh, we go to, uh, to set up uh, the respective uh, uh, workloads which will be allowed in this uh, specific tenant. And also here we can put quotas. Quotas work on two levels, soft quota and hard quota. Um, soft quota, uh, when, when uh, uh, the user uh, is uh, reaching out to, uh, to the soft quota level, uh, then they get uh, notification only, but they can increase the number. In, in our case, we are in per workload model. So now if, you, if we put a soft quota 10 workstations, when the, <clears throat> uh, there are 10 workstations activated, uh, the user will get a notification, but they, they will be able to increase the number. And uh, when they reach out to uh, the level of the hard quota, which is 10 plus five, uh, in our case, uh, total 15, then they, they will not be able to increase them anymore and they, they, they get notification as well. A uh, quota <clears throat> is very convenient when you sell, when the managed service provider sells uh, predefined uh, packages to, uh, to the customers. Then you define quotas here and you make sure that uh, the customer is uh, uh, in, uh, in, in those predefined uh, quotas and uh, is using uh, the respective uh, type of uh, workloads. Um, if, you, if you allow from here the, the workloads or if you allow the advanced packs uh, from here, um, it is okay, it's absolutely okay to leave everything activated. Uh, the customer will not be charged uh, if they are not using it. The customer will be charged only if they use certain functionalities. So <clears throat> you can, um, allow all of them and leave them as they are uh, by default uh, right now. Um, here, uh, it is the same for, for the advanced packs. Uh, and uh, here, uh, you attach certain uh, cloud location to, to this specific customer tenant. Acronis has uh, more than 50 data centers all around the world. 
um, and they're increasing every month. Uh, we are releasing new new data centers. Um, so uh, you can uh, store the customer data in the data center where which, which which the customer wants uh, to have their, those data to be stored. And here we attach this uh, cloud location, uh, the, 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 the physical data center location to, uh, to this specific customer tenant. Uh, if you want to have more than one account, uh, more than uh, uh, to, to use more than one data center, it is um, uh, also possible. We have service providers with uh, eight, 10 <clears throat> uh, service provider accounts in different data centers because, because their customers uh, store their data, want to store their data in different data centers. So this is possible. You have just to request uh, uh, different accounts in, in uh, each data center. Uh, and uh, here, the, the, this is a possibility to put uh, quotas also for the advanced disaster recovery. In the advanced disaster recovery section, we have uh, three components uh, to be charged. Uh, four, actually. This is the backup uh, uh, storage, then we have the disaster recovery storage, then we have the compute points, and we have public IP address. And here, um, you can put uh, quotas uh, for those components uh, as well. And uh, also, uh, you can allow uh, the local uh, or allow or uh, disable the uh, local backup. Once you create uh, uh, the, the, the creation of uh, customer tenant is quite uh, straightforward. Uh, once you create it, it pops up here and you can manage it. Um, <clears throat> before jumping into, into the customer tenant functionalities, uh, let, let's uh, explore a little bit more the functionalities of the service provider tenant. One of the very useful features uh, which we uh, have uh, recently released here uh, is the possibility to manage devices directly from, uh, from the service provider tenants um, without jumping into respective uh, customer tenants. We develop our uh, platform to be more and more convenient for the service providers uh, uh, to work with it. And uh, this is one of the improvements um, which we released uh, in uh, one of our uh, recent releases. Uh, in the cloud, we work, <clears throat> we work on uh, monthly releases. Every month we release new functionalities. So here, <clears throat> you can see one of those uh, new improvements which has uh, been recently released. Um, you, you see all of the devices here. So you can choose uh, the respective uh, customer tenant without jumping in the customer tenant, just directly here from the uh, <clears throat> service provider console. And uh, you can see here all of the devices which are available in those customer tenants. Here in this specific tenant, I have only one <clears throat> device in this uh, in this customer tenant, but if you have uh, many of them, they all are going to pop up here <clears throat> and you can uh, manage them directly from here. At the moment, uh, uh, it is possible to, um, to apply only scripting plans directly on all of the device or on chosen devices uh, directly from here. Uh, but later here in the management section, uh, we'll um, uh, put also more functionalities which are available in the uh, protection plan of each respective uh, customer tenant. The scripting, it is another <clears throat> new uh, capability. So um, um, at the moment, uh, we support uh, <clears throat> uh, two languages, PowerShell on Windows and uh, Bash on Mac OS. Uh, in some of the <clears throat> next releases, we'll support also uh, Python scripting. Python will be available on uh, uh, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. One of the questions is, um, which we uh, uh, usually receive is uh, how, how we support Linux. So the answer is uh, the Linux will be, support, uh, will be supported uh, by Python scripting, which will come in some of the next releases. And Python scripting will be, will be available on all of the platforms, on uh, Windows, Mac OS, and uh, Linux. Currently, PowerShell on Windows and Bash on Mac OS. Uh, there are 42 uh, predefined scripts, so you can use them directly from here. To use a certain script, uh, you, you uh, have to clone it, to clone it in my script section. And from my scripts, uh, you, have, uh, you have a possibility to either to execute it instantly or to, uh, to create a scripting plan and then uh, execute it uh, uh, 
um, or on a, on a schedule. Uh, if you decide to, to create uh, uh, a scripting plan, uh, then you can apply, uh, you, you can choose here the respective uh, uh, machine, respective agent, uh, where the script will be executed. Uh, choose the script, uh, make a schedule, then uh, uh, choose the account and put uh, maximum duration to avoid endless loops. And then uh, it, it will be executed directly on the uh, on those machines. Uh, using the cyber scripting functionality is very uh, quite, quite useful for the managed service providers. Here you can automate the <coughs> work uh, on your uh, the admi uh, administrative work uh, on your customer devices, and you can uh, uh, do some um, additional functionalities. For example, installation of um, uh, third-party software on schedule on. Um, uh, certain machines and many other, many other administrative tasks. Going back to uh, the service provider tenant <clears throat> here, um, uh, it is possible to generate uh, reports. It, it is about uh, uh, the current usage. And uh, uh, from here, you, well, once you generate the usage reports, uh, then later you can turn this information into a billing information. Uh, we have a nice spreadsheet which is available. Uh, and if this topic is interesting for you, uh, just uh, contact Neboshe and uh, then we can provide uh, um, <clears throat> more information about transferring the usage information into billing information, which is uh, quite, uh, quite a useful task in the uh, MSP uh, everyday work. Uh, from here, you, you can create also operational, so-called operational reports, uh, which are uh, central view of the activities, alerts, um, and uh, many other parameters. Uh, there are plenty of widgets which you can uh, uh, put here, different uh, types of widgets. Uh, this is, um, uh, again, this is a central view of uh, all of the alerts, all of the activities, uh, everything uh, on a central level. Uh, um, about the, uh, the devices and activities in the respective service, in the respective customer tenants, uh, but uh, here you can see them uh, on a central level. And uh, also you can generate so-called uh, executive summary report. It is quite convenient. This executive summary report is being generated customer by customer. Um, and it is uh, uh, quite often being used uh, to, to be sent, um, to be sent uh, on schedule or uh, um, you, you, you can send it uh, ad hoc. You choose the contacts, you choose the, uh, the, the, the customer contacts uh, where this, uh, this uh, report uh, uh, will be sent. And usually this report is being used to uh, go together with the invoice, which the many service provider is issuing to their customers <clears throat> at the end. Uh, um, um, actually, it shows the value of your service. It shows well, what uh, what uh, has happened uh, during the month in the respective customer tenant, and uh, the managed service providers are usually uh, usually using it uh, to to go together with their invoice. Um, <clears throat> there are plenty of uh, integrations. Uh, if you use uh, some kind of um, uh, third party. MSP, uh, some, some kind of third party um, uh, PSA or RMM tool. Um, uh, we have uh, plenty of integrations. Here you can see uh, the major integrations. Um, uh, we have a dedicated uh, so-called uh, <clears throat> solutions portal where you can see all the integrations. And um, um, from here, you can jump directly to the respective um, cloud application and see how, how to activate the respective plugin so that uh, to use the Acronis Cyber Protect Cloud functionalities directly from the <clears throat> respective uh, portal. If you want to, to do your, uh, your um, uh, custom integration or um, uh, if you want to integrate the Acronis Cyber Protect Cloud with uh, 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 your billing system or provisioning system, or uh, if you want just to pull out data from a Cronus Cyber Protect Cloud, uh, some machine friendly data uh, and um, uh, upload them later in uh, some of your uh, custom applications, um, you can use uh, our RESTful APIs. 
they're uh, available directly from here. Also, they're published. Uh, they're published uh, on uh, the uh, Postman portal, so you can execute them, execute them uh, directly from there. Uh, if this topic is interesting for you, if you need more information, uh, because this is, it is quite uh, a deep topic to be discussed, please uh, uh, let Nevoisha know, and uh, we'll provide uh, more information <clears throat> and help how to how to do this. Um, uh, we, we go back to, to, to the topic of uh, the locations. I mentioned that um, um, uh, Kronisk has some more, <clears throat> more than 50 data centers. And uh, here you see the, the locations which are related to the respective uh, data center. Um, you can put <clears throat> your custom location here by using our uh, Kronisk cyber infrastructure. Um, you can put, uh, if you use it as a, uh, as a Cronus uh, backup gateway, uh, then you can, you can put behind it uh, uh, block storage, which, which is uh, iSCSI uh, block storage, or you can put uh, uh, NFS uh, target NFS storage, or you can use any S3 compatible uh, cloud or storage uh, to attach it as a backend storage. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, <clears throat> which we receive from time to time is, um, okay, the customer is using uh, <clears throat> and has subscription in uh, Wasabi Cloud. Can it be used uh, as, a, uh, as a backup destination uh, in the Chrome Cyber Protect Cloud? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, Wasabi is uh, S3 compatible and uh, uh, you can put it as a backend storage behind the uh, Chrome Cyber uh, infrastructure. Uh, or uh, in addition, you can build build up uh, your own storage, um, your own uh, software defined storage cluster. Uh, here you see the the the, the storage nodes, and uh, uh, you build uh, your own um, uh, software defined storage with uh, storage nodes with redundancy erasure coding. Um, <clears throat> and you can sell this uh, local storage. You can do so in the uh, if you, if you use, for example, your own uh, iSCSI uh, storage or NFS storage uh, to, to put it in your data center or uh, in the collocation center near, nearby, and you can use it uh, as, a, as a destination. Later, this will, this will pop up um, uh, in the customer tenant as uh, a Chronix cloud, but actually the physical location will be this one, which you, which you uh, attach to the respective customer tenants. <clears throat> uh, you can fully rebrand the the uh, uh, the portal, so you can put here the uh, the your logo, the color schema. Even you can rebrand the agent and um, agent uh, installer. Uh, the links, everything. So uh, as I said, uh, the 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 service provider tenant is uh, very easy to to work with, uh, and once you define uh, and set up here the the customer tenant then uh, you can go in the, in the respective customer tenant and manage the device and plans from there. So now we jump into uh, the customer tenant uh, platform uh, console to, to see what are the functionalities here. Uh, here, the idea is to have uh, one agent, one single console, um, one protection plan, one unified protection plan to manage uh, all those uh, cyber uh, protection uh, functionalities. Cyber protection, this is a combination of uh, cyber security, which is uh, malware protection, URL filtering, vulnerability assessment, patch management, and uh, uh, data protection, which is uh, 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 the, the, the backup. So all of those functionalities can be managed from here. And now we are going to explore <clears throat> the functionalities here in the uh, customer tenant. The very first thing that you need to do is to activate, um, uh, is to uh, install and register uh, agent on um, your workloads, uh, which you want to, to manage with the Chrome Cyber Protect Cloud. The architecture is uh, simple, so you, you see the cloud console, and also you see the, and also you have the uh, uh, agent which is uh, locally installed uh, on the respective workload. We support many different platforms. Here you see workstations, uh, Windows and Mac servers, Windows, Linux, mobile devices, iOS and Android, uh, virtualization hosts, um, and different applications. When we support uh, virtualization environment, we have two major ways to support them. 
the first uh, the first option is uh, um, uh, agentless support, which means no agent on the respective uh, virtual machine on the guest operating system, only agent on the uh, virtual host. Uh, this way, we support uh, VMware ASXi, Virtuoso Hybrid Infrastructure, Hyper-V, Overton Red Hat, and Scale Computing. And uh, we support uh, all of those environments in agent-based mode, which means uh, uh, we have a dedicated agent on every guest operating system, on every virtual machine. And this way we can support uh, uh, <clears throat> all of those environments. On top of the uh, agent for the uh, operating system, then we have a certain agent for uh, different applications. Um, um, you, you can have so-called uh, application aware backup for Microsoft SQL Server, Exchange, Active Directory, Oracle Database. And from here also you can activate uh, <clears throat> Uh, the cloud to cloud agent for Microsoft 365 or uh, Google Workspace. There is a uh, plenty of automation, uh, plenty of uh, capabilities for uh, uh, to automate the uh, whole process uh, for uh, discovery in Windows environments. Uh, you can <clears throat> search the uh, uh, Active Directory, local Active Directory, or scan the local network, or specify the devices manually uh, or import them from. Uh, from a file. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, you have a possibility to run unattended um, uh, installation uh, with a registration token to register machines with uh, uh, token and to do it uh, in automated manner uh, without using username and password. Uh, uh, and uh, in, in, in this way, you can automate the, the whole process of uh, um, discovering installation and registration of the agents. Once you install and register the agents, they pop up here, and then you can apply the respective uh, protection plan. Um, in the protection plan, you can see here all of the functionalities uh, uh, available. And uh, this is the uh, central point where you see the, <clears throat> uh, the functionalities and um, you create the, the plan and uh, apply, apply, apply it on the respective uh, workloads. Um, uh, we constantly develop our, our solution. And uh, <clears throat> as I said, every, every month there is a new uh, functionalities. Uh, there are new, new functionalities uh, coming. Um, and here, once we announce new functionalities, you can see it uh, here in the, in the protection plan. Uh, for example, uh, recently we uh, announced the uh, data loss prevention. Later in the year, we will we'll announce uh, the uh, advanced uh, security plus uh, EDR. EDR will uh, be available here as well. And as I said, uh, uh, there is a specific uh, icon here to each, each uh, functionality, uh, which uh, uh, requires uh, additional um, advanced pack to be activated. Um, Let's uh, let's go through the functionalities uh, briefly, starting with uh, uh, with the backup. Uh, what uh, what we can uh, backup? We can backup the entire machine, decent volumes, files and folders, or different different applications. If we backup, if if we choose to backup different applica those applications uh, from here, uh, then uh, they'll be backed up uh, at a uh, uh, file level. But if we choose them uh, to to back them up from here, then <clears throat> they will be uh, they, they will use uh, the so-called uh, uh, application where backup and uh, the dedicated agent for application where back uh, for application where backup will be activated uh, <clears throat> when backing up the data of, of uh, um, the respective application. Um, then uh, uh, now we, we have to choose uh, the destination where the data will go, uh, where to, to backup. So here you see this cloud storage. Cloud, uh, now you see cloud storage, but behind this cloud storage is the certain uh, physical location which uh, we attach during the creation of this uh, customer tenant. On top of that, uh, we can define different uh, uh, local destinations. So the customer, so some customers say, okay, I have a cloud uh, console, but uh, can I store my data entirely uh, locally? I have uh, uh, compliance regulations and I need to store the data locally. The answer is uh, yes. 
So you can have a, a local folder or a SMB, SIFS uh, network folder or a NFS folder locally and store uh, your data, store, store the customer data uh, locally. Uh, <clears throat> there is a very good uh, tool set for creating schedules and uh, creating uh, retention policies. Uh, here uh, you, you can uh, create a, a, a schedule and you can use um, all of the uh, types of the uh, backup uh, available, uh, incremental, full, differential, or any custom combination of, of, uh, different, of those types. Um, and uh, uh, on, the retention, on the retention policy, no limitations, uh, the data can be kept uh, uh, as many months or years uh, as needed. Uh, sometimes we get a uh, uh, question, can we keep the data for seven or 10 years because of GDPR or because of the uh, local uh, laws and regulations? The answer is yes, <clears throat> no limitations. <clears throat> here, uh, this is the encryption, uh, which can be specified uh, from here. Um, if you activate the enhanced security mode, then it will be activated by default. Uh, if no, then you can decide whether to activate it uh, or not. Uh, all the data in Chrome Cyber Protect Cloud um, are uh, uh, fully encrypted, end-to-end -end encrypted, but uh, here you can add uh, an additional layer of uh, encryption. So you can choose the uh, encryption algorithm, put the password, and this is it, and the data will be uh, encrypted. Uh, there are plenty of uh, backup uh, options here. I'm not going to go through uh, all of them. Uh, I just want to, to uh, draw your attention on uh, some, some of the uh, important uh, ones. Uh, for example, uh, this uh, forensic option, uh, which is quite unique for Acronis, uh, which allows you together with the backup, which, which allows the user together with the backup to, create, to, to collect also forensic data. This means uh, we are collecting uh, 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 the entire disk space, even uh, uh, the unallocated space, uh, raw memory dump, uh, snapshot of running process. And then you can use this uh, forensic information to do forensic, forensic in investigations in case of uh, an accident. Um, if uh, I mentioned uh, the application aware backup, but on top of that, uh, if the customer has some, some uh, specific database like, um, uh, like uh, uh, Cassandra or MongoDB or uh, uh, PostgreSQL, um, in fact, uh, we can backup uh, consistently any type of uh, database by using these uh, pre and post commands and pre and post data capture commands. Uh, by using them, we can execute commands or scripts uh, before uh, the backup process, before the uh, data capture process, after that. And in this way, we can backup uh, uh, consistently any kind of uh, application or database. Um, once you, well, if we, if we uh, do entire machine backup, then we can use later this entire machine for disaster recovery. I'm going to go through disaster recovery functionality at the end uh, uh, <clears throat> deeper. Um, so uh, you can use uh, the disaster recovery uh, option to, to apply the, the plan. It's quite, quite easy. When, when we speak about uh, disaster recovery, the customer usually, usually starts uh, to imagine um, long times uh, to, be, to, to implement it, uh, uh, high budgets. Uh, here in the Chrome Cyber Protect Cloud, it's very feasible. It's very easy, very easy to be used uh, and very uh, cheap and um, uh, uh, feasible uh, for, for the customer. So uh, as I said uh, later, we'll, we'll, we'll have uh, more time to, to spend on uh, disaster recovery functionalities. Um, let's go to the cybersecurity functionalities, antivirus and anti-malware protection. One of the usual questions that we get is, uh, can we use uh, antivirus and anti-malware protection? Can we use Acronis uh, entirely for our antivirus and anti-malware protection? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, we combine many different uh, state-of-the-art uh, uh, innovative uh, technologies. Um, as part of our antivirus and anti-malware protection, we have this uh, advanced anti-malware, which is the standard uh, signature-based uh, anti-malware engine. And then on top of that, we have um, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence powered uh, te technologies uh, are being used uh, here. 
uh, such as uh, exploit prevention or uh, behavioral uh, analysis and protection with our behavioral engine, which is powered by um, our unique ma machine learning technology. Um, <clears throat> and all of those technologies working together uh, implement so-called defense in depth or uh, layered defense and allow the customer to have three important parameters. 100% uh, or very near to 100% catch rate, 0% or very near to 0% false positives, and catching zero dead threats and advanced persistent threats in, uh, in real time. Um, and another question is, uh, okay, can we, can we use uh, uh, Acronis only for anti-ransomware protection, but uh, to use uh, our traditional anti-malware protection <clears throat> uh, uh, together? The answer is yes, uh, you can use uh, um, only, only, uh, only those, uh, those functionalities which you want to use uh, and disable those functionalities uh, which you uh, don't want to use. So active protection, this is um, another uh, innovative technology for uh, anti-ransomware protection, which allows the user to protect against uh, different ty types of uh, ransomware. Uh, <clears throat> URL filtering, URL filtering works uh, uh, on the endpoints, but, is, uh, but can be centrally managed uh, directly from here. Uh, we have also Windows Defender, Antivirus, and Microsoft Security Essentials uh, capability to be centrally managed directly from here, which is especially convenient for customers who have the, uh, who don't have the, their own Active Directory and still use um, uh, Windows Defender and Microsoft Security Essentials. You can manage them directly from here. Vulnerability assessment and patch management. Um, <clears throat> this is a uh, very nice functionality. We have... Uh, uh, quite a large number of uh, uh, um, applications which we support for vulnerability assessment, uh, different platforms, uh, Linux, Microsoft, uh, Mac OS, um, <clears throat> operating systems and uh, third party uh, products. So uh, one of the questions uh, which we receive is uh, how the vulnerability assessment uh, works. Is it uh, on the network level? Um, is it on application level? The answer is uh, it works uh, on the endpoint. The agent scans the applications and operating system uh, for vulnerabilities. And then once we do the vulnerability assessment, then we can uh, do our patch management. Here in the patch management section, uh, there is a very good uh, and very granular tool set to, to, to create um, a fully automated process for patch management. Here you can define uh, which workload, which application, what category of patches to go automatically uh, <clears throat> with uh, what severity. And if you want to, to put um, uh, manually interaction in, in between, then you can uh, say here only approved patches go, and then you can do it uh, in uh, a managed way. So the, the administrator can, can uh, decide which, patch, which patches to go uh, automatically. Um, then uh, we have uh, our uh, data protection map, which is a heat map view of uh, whether the files with those extensions are being uh, protected. And then we come to uh, the uh, uh, DLP section where we have so-called uh, uh, a context-aware DLP, which is related to, to the device control, quite uh, granular here. And we have uh, the content-aware DLP, which is related to uh, the uh, content-aware DLP to, to, to scanning the content, and uh, you can activate it and set it up from here. Uh, in the second part of uh, today's session, we'll go deeper into, into the, 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 the DLP topic. Here, now we just mentioned that uh, it can be activated from uh, the protection plan. And uh, uh, also uh, here in the uh, devices section, um, we can do backup of, uh, as mentioned, of um, uh, cloud applications such as uh, Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace. From here, <clears throat> you can manage all of the items to be backed up, uh, all the items in the respective Microsoft 365 organization to be back up, backed up. You can create dedicated uh, protection plans and back them up uh, um, in a granular way. 
Um, also, there are plenty of uh, uh, possibilities for uh, uh, for uh, uh, implementing of uh, three to one rule. For example, uh, we can do backup uh, replication. We can uh, do uh, virtual machines uh, replications or conversion of um, uh, backups directly to uh, virtual machines to to apply to to implement the uh, three to one uh, rule. Um, in the software management, management section, we have a capabilities to manage the uh, vulnerabilities here. You can mitigate them directly from here. Um, and uh, in the same way, you can mitigate also the, uh, the different uh, uh, patches. You can apply the different patches uh, directly from here. Uh, the dashboard uh, allows you to, to have uh, many different widgets and to have uh, central management of those functionalities uh, directly from here. Uh, we, we have uh, full software and hardware inventory, software and hardware inventory. You see the widgets here, which, were, uh, which functionalities work on uh, physical machines, but also on virtual machines as well. Uh, and uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, one console, one platform, uh, one protection plan to manage uh, centrally all those uh, functionalities uh, from here. Um, we have uh, also capabilities to uh, have uh, remote, <clears throat> remote management. For example, uh, let's take this device. So here you can activate so-called cyber protection desktop and connect directly to the remote device uh, via RDP or HTML5 or uh, remote assistance. If the topic for, for remote management is interesting for you, if you use uh, some kind of um, remote management system and you want to, uh, and you consider the uh, migration to Acronis, uh, then uh, we have another, another product, which is called uh, Acronis Protect Connect, for, which is uh, dedicated entirely for uh, remote management of um, workloads. It is similar to any desk and, any desk and uh, team viewer with many extended uh, uh, capabilities. So if the topic for the remote management is interesting for you, again, um, make sure that um, you notify Neboisha and then uh, we will provide uh, more information. Um, as said, uh, one platform, one console, one uh, single agent uh, to manage all those capabilities, functionalities uh, from here. Now I'm going to stop. We'll, we'll have uh, uh, five, three to five minutes uh, uh, break between the sessions. Uh, in the meantime, let me check uh, if there are any questions. Uh, no questions in the chat, but if you if you want to ask any questions, please please uh, feel free to ask them now. Okay, good. I will I will stop recording now, just to to separate the sessions for easier maintenance later. Uh...